happy pre-hump day, whatever the fuck that is. Happy Tuesday, last uh, 14 minutes of it. Happy Joker 2, follow you do, teaser, trailer, two hours and two minutes and 25 seconds. Pretty you know, long <laughs> teaser. Uh, but it looks great. We're going to go into that. Um, happy CinemaCon Tuesday, I guess. So I'm nothing near an insider. I'm on the outside of just everything, but I don't even need to have my ear pressed up to the glass this time to probably know that every one of those studios in there is lying to those poor theater owners and telling them just how great everything is going to be. And we're going to back you guys. And we're going to put everything in the theaters and you guys, we're going to turn back the clock to 1989. And when there was no streaming and no reality of any of that stuff, and we're going to put you guys on top. And I'm pretty sure the CinemaCon people and NATO and all those theater owners are just had their tongues out and their tongues are on the ground. And they're like, when you, when you crack open that wet dog food, and your dog knows what it is, and he comes in there, and he just he sits there, and he looks up at you like you're God, and just doesn't matter what you throw at him, we'll eat it, we'll eat it, just give it to us. That's what's going on right now in CinemaCon, because CinemaCon is primarily for the North American theater organization. That's what it is, and the same people that are going to cause the biggest influence on the future of theaters as far as that goes are the same people who are putting on the presentations warner brothers discovery is lit who owns hbo max is literally putting on presentations to the theater owners disney plus disney plus which owns i mean or disney which owns disney plus they're there putting on presentations to the theater owners you know what they're doing at their hotel uh, bars and stuff like that when they're meeting? They're talking about streaming. So hilarious, but hey, one can hope. Oh, let's hit the chat. I already see Banes. Three, three, <laughs> 10, 14 Banes in there, guys. Uh, as usual, I will be ignoring the Banes. I will be absolutely, if you guys, if you want to be, that's Brad bringing you up, but if you want to be ignored by the host, all you got to do is add Bane. To your, to your topic. I'm sorry, I can't do it tonight. Uh, if you want to donate, if you want to donate to the, um, if you're serious about uh, participation and you want to donate to the mothership, help get me caffeine, uh, equipment, anything like that. Every tip helps. Uh, just donate to the, um, you can tip and then I will, a little chime will happen and I'll read your questions. Uh, we are, we are about 75 uh, subscribers away from uh, being monetized as far as Super Chats, memberships, and all the other stuff. So um, once we reach that, the whole deal is going to change because we're going to start monetizing our, our shirts and stuff like that. That'll go in there. Uh, but we're about 75. We've reached where we reached pretty, you know, I've had the channel for a while, but I hadn't committed to it for a while. So, yeah, we're out there. We're, we'll reach our 60,000th view next week sometime. I'm guessing uh, by next Saturday. Uh, especially since we have a lot of Rebel Moon content happening. I will be streaming from uh, the our big screen presentation of Rebel Moon next Wednesday, uh, before and after. Uh, we will be having, uh, we're really going to, um, we're really going to kick it in now high gear in regards to wrapping up or getting close to wrapping up. Our, our fundraiser will not officially end until the until we hand the check to the local chapter of the American Foundation for Suicide Fund, the, the Nevada chapter. We will hand it, and that will conclude that night. That's a, I think that's a Saturday. That Saturday night, we will officially conclude this campaign, and I hope that um, uh, we are at or above uh, fifteen thousand when we do. So, um, but yeah, if you want to donate that, also. Um, I will put the uh, charity link in there. If you guys got any crazy psychotic requests that you want us to do, uh, you need to be backed up with a donation for the uh, the charity. Hold on, because that's my dad texting me, and he knows I'm going here. Hello, oh, Ozzy. All right, got that done. All right. All right, so excluding the Baines shit in here. Hello, Clinton. Hello, Ruthie. Ruthie posting all her little party pics, man. She's hanging out on beaches and hanging out with her girlfriends and stuff, man. Look at her. She got that same glowing smile no matter what she's doing. I don't know if she has any other facial. She's just always smiling. I'm just always happy. The happiest person I've ever seen. Hello, Rajay. 
fourth. Yeah, con. Con is a key word. <laughs> Similar con. <laughs> I guess it. I just curious to um to see what what there's. I you know I know some people who are who are in it who work it. Uh, and you know they they you know there's some pretty big stars there. Uh, but like I said, there needs to be like a sub con, like right after it, where it's the same people, basically st- streaming con, because all this stuff and how fast they're going to want to shove it to streaming. Don't invite Nato to that one because they're not going to want to. They're not going to want to hear that one. But um, but the, the probably the most important people that are there for the cinemas are the people who like you know they who like do the food, because that's where the theaters make make their money. And I think we're going to have a hybrid operation. I don't think theaters will ever go away. I won't. I don't. I don't want them to go away. I just understand that. Come on, this is we're we're, we're in a different place now. But I think that you're going to have ads you're going to have people leveraging ads and food there's going to be different things different ways that the um the cinemas get their money and there's going to have to be a different revenue share but i think every year at CinemaCon, they, they end up peddling this old ancient model and telling people that this is going to stay around forever and that's i, I mean i don't want to i don't I, I, lying is a harsh word but it's being disingenuous in my opinion but that's that's just me how you doing fun fun guys it's so nice to name the wise nice queen of darkness uh, let's see. Zaslav says cinema um, will uh, is still alive, and Superman Legacy will save theaters. Did he? Have, I, did he actually say that? He said this. One of his uh, <clears throat> opinions said something to that effect. They're they're really leveraging a lot on Superman Legacy, which scares me. I don't think that's a good thing. I don't think that's a good thing because a I don't think you should ever you know put that much pressure on a movie to begin with, and b I you know it sets you up for failure. Because now you've put standards and expectations on that movie instead of letting that movie do what it needs to do. So, uh, yeah, but they showed the emblem. We, you know, I'd already seen the emblem, but they showed it a plain, the actual official emblem on there uh, today. So, um, but yeah, Zazov will say cinema is it's, it's still alive, but we, we, they need to be honest, though. It's not the priority of these guys, it's just not a corporate priority. You got you just do the math, the math is simple. You know, Godzilla, Godzilla, uh, and Kong made made three sixty million. I mean, maybe it's probably going to top out about four or five million once it completes its and four or five hundred million once it completes its plan. That's, I mean, they had to give up thirty five percent of the like. I've always explained. I've gone through that math before. Once it goes to PVOD, that that percentage increases, and then once it goes to HBO Max, that's just one more thing that keeps you subscribed to HBO Max, and that collective advantage of pulling in if you have ninety to hundred million. You know, subscribers, you know, and that's low end. You should be, they should be shooting for a lot more. But times 15, 16 bucks, whatever it is, you know, that's, that's where your, that's where your leverage is. That's where the future is, you know, and these guys are greedy. So when they tell you, you know, like, especially like last year when he said, well, we're going to stop, you know, prioritizing, making big budget things for streaming. I'm your streaming customer too, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna go see your movies in the theaters, but I am a subs- you're you're basically fucking me. You're telling me that that as a as a customer of your streaming service that you're not gonna provide for me. So you're either living in the caves, not wanting to come out and deal with you know modern society. I I don't believe he's stupid, or you're lying, or at the very best being disingenuous. It's my opinion. Uh, hey, how's it going? Oh, sorry. But if they were smart, they would Netflix dominated the streaming war by by a long shot. Meanwhile, W other dimension brand. No, they don't. No, they don't. You know, they you you strengthen your brand. You cannot ignore the feature just because you prefer something else. You know, like I said, you could prefer to have torches in your house and candles instead of electricity. That doesn't mean it's smart. That doesn't mean everyone else in the the world around you is going to evolve and move past you, you know. So no, they need to strengthen their brand. They're going to strengthen their brand. All the studios are promised to focus on high. Pro- yeah, okay. I I can't even read that. <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence without the bullshit alarms ringing through these earphones. But I'll try. All the studios are promising a refocus on high profile theatrical release you're going to see a major talking point this week along yeah you're going to see that 100 agree but and i'm gonna I, that's the same thing as me telling you 
you come to the sci-fi center, I'm just going to be handing out hundred dollar bills for you. That's a lie. I'm not, I can say anything. I could say anything to placate you. If, if, if I got an industry that's on the fringes and, and you know, like I said, we're holding the convention. It is for you. This convention, Cinecon is literally for them. What are they going to say? Hey, we're going to fuck you guys. Watch this. Watch this presentation. You want to watch the presentation that we're that we're going to show you and tell you everything, and we're going to refocus all this on? Or you want to, you want us to show you what we're actually going to do to your asses right there? You want to watch which one? You want to watch? Raise your hand. Of course, they're going to tell them that everything is okay. <laughs> but come on, man. I mean, you have to want and hope and be desperate for that reality in order for that for, to believe that, or to believe all of that at least. That's just my opinion. But yeah. Yeah, there's gonna be a whole week of them. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna jam pack your theaters, and you know what? There are gonna be some excellent movies that make a lot of money, but the movie, the, it, the the industry is no longer just focused on that though. Some of these indie movies and risk that people want to be taken exist because of streaming and because of the safety net that streaming gives you. Some of these movies would have never been greenlit. So, yeah, um, okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna turn over the. The chat to Brad. Uh, no, no, Bane, please. Uh, okay. And then we'll go to the Joker trailer. Uh, trailer. Okay. Oh, let's see where you left off here. Uh, Hi, Nerd Cosa Nostra. What's going on? Yeah, how's it going? Cosa Nostra. Uh, uh, just see where hold you on, left off. Hold on. Hold on. I lied. I lied. Oh, uh, fourth. Okay. <laughs> uh, William, you talked streaming is a great experience, greatest cinema experience we got before. Okay. Absolutely not. And I'm gonna. I am. I love the cinematic experience. I don't want to see my favorite movies anywhere else but on that ginormous stream or scream, scream. <laughs> but I. I under. I'm not stupid though. I. I. I can't. You know. You can't ignore the fact that I'm in a situation that a good majority of the movie goers are are not in. I don't have the wife. I don't have the kid. I don't have the mortgage. I don't have a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have, you know, I don't have a diminished, you know, financial capacity. Like I, like I said before, and this is very important. The millennials and the, and, and um, what's the other generation? Gen Z. Gen Z. You guys got fucked, man. Sorry. Sorry. I, 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 I didn't do it, but you guys are literally trying to support all of this shit on the same money that we were making. I was making at your age, while prices of everything have shot up, you don't think that affects your 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 entertainment dollar? It damn sure does. It affects everything. And no sooner or than later, that is those those two generations are going to become your median, you know, buyers, and you you put them in a bad situation. So retail and free market is going to adjust to that. You no longer can go see these movies, so you're going to have to make it to where. When they can afford to go to see the big screen, they can. But you can't not take their money on all these other platforms. Like I said, a $29 movie buy for a family of four that can just get like a DiGiorno and, and some popcorn and keep it cheap, that's still good money per unit for the studio. I, I mean, like I said, do I would I ever want to see Dune 1 or 2 or Blade Runner or any of these things on a smaller screen? No, I agree with you. I'm not saying that it is not the best experience but we have there's a mathematical truth here that that you just cannot ignore you know so there's a difference guys there's a difference between what i prefer what i think is better and understanding the actual financial dynamics of these things it's just it's, it's retail logic at that point yeah. all right now let's take over uh clint asks me uh hey brad here's another test brad you're a no good snyder lover your response is oh thank you very much <laughs> hold on i lied again yeah, I, I was actually just bring, about to bring. Oh, sorry. okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, about, I was about to bring that one up. I don't think they're necessarily lying. Okay, we'll come up with another word for it. It's more like oh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. It's more like uh, stretching the truth. It's, it's a refocus and pivot back to yeah, the theater. We're not lying. No. We're just basically lying. <laughs> okay, it's li it, to me. Okay, we're focused. Well, okay, that's right. They're not pivoting back to the theatrical. They're not. They're not. I don't care what they tell you, they're not. They can't. They can't. When you break this down financially, they cannot. Their, the math isn't there. There is not enough volume 
that you can get from the movie theaters at the rate things are going right now to sustain what these studios need. Especially the ones that don't have parks and other financial, you know, if you're just an outright studio, then you, you just it's just not there for you. Disney would have the better argument to re refocus and pivot because they're feeding their money back into other levels of things. But what's, what's Warner Brothers doing? You know, you know, I mean, it, it's like I said, I don't I don't think they're pivoting back to theatrical. Um, I think eventually the, they, they will, you know, they will never completely abandon it. Of course not. But you cannot tell me that these guys are going to not start spending massive money on their streaming service. They're going to have to because retention, the retention on their streaming service gives them stability that they can turn around and save financiers and stockholders and everything else. OK, we want you guys to front this money because, you know, we can make it. There's nothing that's being made in the cinema right now or coming out in the cinema right now that's going to sustain that and be able to give them that solid footing. I don't think there's going to be a payback back to the theatrical. I think I think you're just like I said, you're going to see some like like George Orwell said with double speak. That's what that shit is. But hmm. It's, All right. Uh, Sorry. How was that Joker 2 trailer? Oh, well, we're going to be yeah. talking about that in a minute here. I'll we'll have and, to take uh, a look at it in about two minutes here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, movie industry is in huge decline. Only 300 projects compared to the usual 600 people on the executive level are not even working. I mean, oh, there you go. You know, it's, it's, hold on. The movie industry is in, in, is a huge time. Okay. Yeah, but the whole thing is going to shift. The whole thing is going to shift. Like I said, and Amazon, things like Amazon and Netflix, because before, like I said, the focus was on that profit you made from the box office, green lighting or, or, or justifying whether uh, something get made. Roadhouse or something like that. Once again, their priorities is is not you're you're filling your theater theme, you know, and you're going to see more things like that, and you're going to see more hybrid, especially when these guys start working together to di distribute, because you can have one be the studio and the other be the distributor, so they can totally bypass anything they want at that point. So, like I said, I, I uh, think it's wishful thinking to think that the old model is coming back. RJ says, "Has anyone felt like Netflix has not done nearly as big of a marketing push for Rebel Moon Part Two compared to Part One? I feel like the more Part One overall is just comparatively muted." Um, no, because the the marketing campaign for Part Two was Part One, and I talked to somebody yeah, today because I'm like, "Yeah, they were kind of a package deal." Yeah. Yeah. Hey, am I going to get any T-shirts or posters and shit? It's like, nah. So um, why not? Well, because it's not a it's not a a, a full scale theatrical release. We're doing this, you know, we're doing these little things like I'm going to next week to, you know, the Q and A's and stuff like that to promote it. That's it. Because once again, Netflix, the Netflix engine is its promotion. If you were talking about getting somebody out to a theater, different animal, but the net, the Netflix engine, once you're in, you're in, you know, and they don't, and that, that's why they don't have to spend as much money on promotional and average i mean I, I want a cool shirt yeah yeah i want the posters i mean army of the army of the dead they did it but you know that was rare but it's very rare for netbooks to do that um they do little things like what we went to a couple you know back you know when we met zach and all that you know they do stuff like that but that's a lot of those are for big wigs and people that are not me i, I still don't know how i got in there but thank you um but yeah their netflix is its own engine Netflix is its own engine because once you are in there, they're going to feed you what they think they want you to get, you know, to stay there for. So, so yeah, I think part one, I think that was done on purpose because like I said, from when we were talking today, cause like I sent a couple emails cause you know, next week's our deal. Um, and they did explain to, you know, that's just not how Netflix does things. And so far so good. You can say what you want about Netflix, but they're the industry leader when it comes to this stuff. So, all right, next one. And uh, Dort Knight says, Joker 2 looks amazing. It feels like something new and fresh and isn't the Marvel sense of police moving in from CBS or he's here. Pete DC. Be different during like the Batman. Well, and on that note, why don't we go ahead and pull up the trailer? Sure. Let's go ahead and do that. I got it here. <coughs> All right, guys. My allergies are killing me. Okay, got it there. Make sure my sound is. Oh, oh, before you play it, we have a good one here for Maria. All right, here we go. William, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't approve your day off yesterday. I'm gonna have to write you oh, up. Love. This is your first and final warning. 
<laughs> oh, are you here? Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be there tomorrow morning. I'll be here this morning. Yeah, um, I got had some stuff to take care of the day with the VA, and Tuesday is my only day I got to do it because uh, I was not available on Monday. Sorry. Uh, oh, she's talking about yesterday. I didn't stream yesterday. I yeah, was so yeah. close to streaming yesterday because of that Warner Brothers yeah, article. Yeah, he, but then yeah, like, he, oh, well, in fact, you want to pull that up after this trailer? Yeah, we might. Yeah, because it kind okay, of well, yeah, because uh, yeah, because 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 he, he DM William DM me because uh, we 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 mutually agreed to take a, a breather last night. And he, he, uh, I sent him that article we're referring to, and he's like, "Oh, to stream or not to stream? That's the question." So yeah, we just kind of decided to save you know packaging him when we're talking about the Joker two trailer. All right, so let's let's, let's go ahead and check this. Uh, the return of Arthur Fleck. I got too many screens open. Let's go, boys! Take Fleck. You got a joke for us today? We use music to make us whole, to balance the fractures within ourselves. I'm nobody. I haven't done anything with my life like you have. We should be talking about. <laughs> I want to say the real you. Looks good. Oh, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I I thought it was uh I thought this all those hallucinations, all the other jokers chasing him, I think that's all metaphors. I think most of this is in his head, like you know, when he's performing in front of those crowds and all that. I think that's I think that's them imagining what they they want themselves to be instead of what they actually are, and they're gonna be flashing back and forth between the reality and then you know now. Uh, uh yeah, it looks great. I, like I, 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 I saw it today earlier today and i was like this is exactly what i expected it to be um there's also that random violence that's in there that makes it feel like for me like i said growing up my joker you know the joker that i grew up reading was was just based just random violence and just you know that's what he was that chaos that the joker is uh even though this is a separate joker this is our you know this is not necessarily connect, you know. This it's the spirit of the Joker was there in the first movie, and it's it's ever present in this one. That's the Joker. That's that's how he does things. His justifications for things are so unhinged and off the wall that uh, they make his own sense. And this is with that this this trailer kind of is a continuation on that case that they made in the um the uh, the, the first one. So that's how I feel about it. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. And uh, yeah, the uh, I mean, of course, there's that one moment where it has Joker and Harley in the audience. That kind of, that's 
flashing back it, it, like it follows really closely on that you know the dancing scene with them that is you know that is very looks very similar to la la land so yeah it does obviously raise a lot of questions about like what percentage of this is going to be taking place in his head and of course how much is going to be playing on the idea everybody took away from the first one of you know he imagined most if not all of the events of the movie so yeah it's it's already there's always there's already like a big can of worms we're uh we're opening and diving into here and uh you know we have six months to dissect it until it comes out so uh yeah we're looking forward to it hopefully of course there's not going to be a big moral panic in the lead up to it this time Nah, unless you're, I hope heaven forbid. Let's not, hopefully there's no mass shooting. I mean, I I hate to have to say that there hopefully there won't be a mass shooting between now and October, but I know where I live. Um, now this is in response to the uh, the marketing from Netflix. I, I I think they were happy with the response to the first one, uh, and I think that's what he's saying. I, I like I said, I think Netflix's own internal dynamics. I think they you know like I said splitting this up. And that's another thing why why I think they they, they split it up because. It, 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 instead of having to spend money on advertisement, they just kept it in the conversation. Good or bad, we're still talking about you know unrated cuts and all this other stuff. So, um, yeah, oh, and speaking uh, of, uh, yeah, no, the ladders will not be. Listen, um, if fourth yeah. comes to the center, he's he's disappointed. That's <laughs> just all it is too, so. Speaking speaking of uh, you know Zack Snyder related stuff, of course, I'm sure a lot of people saw the uh, report for the uh, it was uh, Zach talking again about wanting to get his uh, you know director's cut of sucker punch really and, and he's quoted as saying uh you know of his fans if they want to start a campaign you know that, that's cool i love the fact that we, that both him as a filmmaker and we as a fan base that's so th- th- that's so associated with it now it's like oh he just can say that it's like oh yeah we're off to the races again so <laughs> um, yeah, sucker punch is going to be easier ip for him to get done uh, yeah, because because that because that's because that's of all Batman and Superman and the characters yeah. that people you know just get really clear pearl clutching about. And and Warner Brothers isn't going to make any more money off of that anyway, so they might as well make a couple of bucks by letting uh, letting another production company handle it and just being the distributor of it. There's nothing for them to lose there. And do you think they might just uh, 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 I mean, venturing into this sort of van top? Do you think they might just hand it off to Netflix? They could. They could because it, it would just be a sale. It would just be a transaction. They're not like I said. There's no more money to be made off a of sucker punch from them at this point, uh, other than them uh, licensing that IP out or um, are releasing it on physical media with a full version on it or something like that. But uh, but if if um, Stone Quarry is willing to put up the money for it, then I, there's no reason for them to uh, not do it because it's not a major IP that that would is entangled like uh the other ones that he's yeah, worked on so yeah. well because he he had previously said uh you know the, like the thing that was holding sucker punch back the, the director's cup sucker punch back was uh something along the lines of like the you know the contracts that were in place for like a, you know, different tv networks and things like that basically stipulated okay you can't release like a, a extended cut or an alternate version of this movie and until that contract you know runs its course so yeah um, it's kind of like why we see justice league on the air it's there's there's other there's other networks and stuff that you know or why you see you know like the, once the film is out of rotation so like once it's hit like netflix or Disney, whatever it's gonna, gonna hit once it once those are done uh because some of those some of those streamers and some of those outlets do sign exclusivity for yeah. the the time that they run because they obviously they don't want you know if they're paying for it and they're drawing ad revenue for it they don't want it showing up in certain other places yet you know that that's understandable but yeah um but that's not those aren't forever uh yeah. and as those you know as those come as those come to a close i don't know when they would come to a close but you know yeah knows? yeah again we, you know we're not reading the you know those contracts i mean it sounded like he was you know the way he uh spoke there i mean maybe you know there's the you know, maybe the, that contract has run its course maybe there's an opening for that now but you know We'll see, but you know, I can't that the, and and go look at that article because uh, that, of course, the as you can imagine, the comments on that uh, just absolutely went supernova, uh, yeah. but, you know, both good and bad. <laughs> uh, but the way you know, again, the way he uh, said, "Hey, if they want to start a campaign, I'm totally cool with that." Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, it, it's always an adventure. I think being a Zack Snyder fan. I, I I don't. Uh, that's I my don't least care. favorite movie of his, though. I, that's that's. Yeah. I, did, I think I said that's the one I've only watched. That that's it. I've only watched it the one yeah. time, and I've never yeah. revisited. Not, it's not a bad movie. It just I just didn't click with me. Uh, I clicked with other people <laughs> though. And, 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 uh, Zazov yeah, didn't say what. I didn't know. didn't oh didn't say that uh, su- that that like Superman Legacy is going to single handedly save theaters or something. 
Nah, he one of his guys said that. What, what did he said something to the effect of, I don't, I when, when they start talking at Cinecon, Cinemacon, I start not listening because I'm like, I, I just, I just think I'm being told some bullshit. But, uh, Peter Stafford came out. That's where I would have gone and taken a shit. But uh, hey, Peter Stafford came out to talk about Superman, about how they focus more on the document. Oh yeah, they talked about that. Uh, just kind of, I, I looked at John Campion's re- rehash of it. Now he, yeah, you know, that's what he said. Um. Yeah, because that, that's apparently that, that's going to be that, that documentary is going to release theatrically this fall. Yeah, which is weird. Um, you know, but so so it's about Christopher Reeve's life, or just uh, just about his tenure as Superman. I think it's about his tenure as Superman. Okay, okay. It's going to be a hard watch, man. I just I just feel, man. Every time I think about Christopher Reeve, yeah. Well, I'm yeah, sure it's it's, I'm gonna, it's probably going to also you know go into of course the uh, you know the uh, accident that uh, that you know left him you know in a wheelchair for the last few years of his life, and probably also this will probably <clears throat> we're probably going to have to stomach a little bit of this. It's going to probably you know venture into his role as uh, Virgil Swan on Smallville. Uh, well, you know what? Hey, listen. Good news for Smallville is that you'll have number fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen uh, people watching it. You know. Okay, William decided to leave a little bit early tonight. Uh, so, <laughs> you, 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 CW guys, I, I, I have to applaud your passion because, like I said, you guys think that the entire fucking universe watched those shows. It is a money laundering <laughs> scheme, guys. Come on, it was on so that they could hide money and take losses there for both. Um, for both uh, Warner Brothers and um, Viacom at the time, this is all it was. It's a money pit, but hey, you know, if you enjoyed 10, 10 I fucking show got ten years. I can't even get good shows to get like three years, but that got ten years. And I watched a lot of Smallville. That show, in my opinion, it's my opinion. This is a scroll down the thing. It's not be very care- Be very careful the next I thing can, you say. I <laughs> listen. I'll go ahead and do this. I personally thought Smallville was trash. I don't think you're trash for liking Smallville. I don't think the people who worked on it were trash or wrote it were trash. I think the ultimate result of that low budget, everything that came out of that channel, was wanting. I'll leave it there. Smoke dark side. No, I'll give you. No, I'll give you. No, I'll give. I'll give you that. It's like I, I wasn't the biggest fan of how uh, of uh, Dark Side's role. And, and, the, and, the premise, and, that, and, that, and that and that was and that was before we got to you know uh, uh, Dark Side as ESGL. How how was everybody coming in the Smallville that Superboy Superman was never gonna meet? Then that look what what, what what oh we we like him as a Superman enemy even though he, he let's take him to Smallville. I'm like what. Uh, yeah, it did have a season. That, that was pretty good, actually. The uh, season yeah, eleven and uh, comic, and I have a parakeet that can shit on it. And and, uh, and uh, um, um, of course, Rose, uh, Rose Obama and Tom Welling. You know, of course, they've been talking a lot about doing an animated continuation. Um, so yeah, I would definitely uh, would want to see uh, where that goes. Oh, and I think RG has some clarification here too. The Christopher Reeve documentary focuses on his life after the horse riding accident and, and his life of activism. It's gonna be the first project released under DC Studios banner. And I could, oh, okay. Okay, so so that might in some ways that might make it an even harder watch because because that's yeah, no. I mean that that was that was that was again that was the last like nine years of his life you know that he that he's he in was chair, in a wheelchair. Man. All right, most direct to stream. This, this is this I agree with, but this is going to change. Most direct to streaming movies feel like disposable trash. For every extraction and extraction two, there's twenty hallmark. Uh, to, yeah, I, okay, I do agree with that, and they are going to have to make the commitment because once again, if you're if you're wanting to take my money and sustain that $2 billion a month, you're going to have to invest in it because the profit is there for you. However, a lot of that disposable trash, and I agree that it is, is watchable and people watch the shit out of it. I see people watching. I mean, you look at the numbers of some of the stuff that um, that they put out on their investment meetings about some of the stuff. I go, I never heard. What is, what, what is that? How is that in the top 1,000? What is it? And then when you you click on it, right, just for the, just for shits and giggles, you you click on it, and you see you start to see. Wait a minute, this looks, feels, and sounds like something else I watched. I just can't put my finger on it because they made some retrograde trash, right? That they tied to that mainline shit that you love, and it works. People watch the retrograde trash. I can't condone it. I don't. I'm not going to admit on air whether I'm one of those people, but it's working. So yeah, I agree with you on one hand, but 
I can't deny their results on the other review. Just saying. Because mm-hmm. uh, some of that stuff is actually pretty fun. But you didn't hear that from me. Yeah, uh, Ruth also says, oh, yeah, we had a little bit more news on the uh, Terror. Fire three coming up. Who cares? Who uh, cares? You people are sick in the brain for wanting more of that. You just, yeah. just Ruth. This is confirms that you, yeah, yeah. You come to Vegas, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on you because you're out here. If you come to Vegas looking for real estate, yeah, out, out, out in that, out in the no. suburbs. No, she's gonna come well, into Vegas. He's gonna come to Vegas with that trash bag full of like uh, you know, tools and the uh, and uh. uh you know, like sharp you know, tool shed instruments that have like yeah. dry blood on Looking them. Looking for shovels. <laughs> Looking for shovels. Oh, oh by how the way, ground out here. It's like, yeah, we yeah. don't need to do it. By the way, we also uh, uh, Clint points out. You want to pull this up too? We uh, uh, the Maxine right. trailer, which uh, uh, dropped uh, yesterday. You want to go to pull that up? Sure. Okay. It looks like shit, that. but hey, you guys enjoy. I I, I, I I don't I don't get. The, the fascination with the first. I watched the first two because everybody told me I got. I had to watch. I gotta watch. I gotta watch them, right? So I watched the first two, and I was like, I just, it just, I was like, okay, that it. Same thing with uh, what's the other one? Um, the one uh, that was really good until the last, the Beast or whatever. The, what the? But yeah, I, I, I saw this earlier today. And okay, good. Let me go ahead. Enjoy this. Yeah, because actually I haven't given a look yet, so it'll be my first time. Oh, you did see it? Okay, yeah. So, no, I, I, so Maxine, your agent tells us you're quite a popular name in adult film and entertainment. Is that correct? I'm curious. Did you always want to be in that line of work? I always wanted to be famous. If you need to read off the sides we gave you, just go ahead, all right? I know the lines. She turns to the camera and, through her trauma, addresses the lens directly. Name five celebrities who got their start in horror movies. Jamie Lee Curtis, John Travolta, Demi Moore, Brooke Shields, and... Maxine fucking Minx. I don't like walking out here with a freaking Night Stalker guy in the loose. The Night Stalker. Night Stalker. Night Stalker. He's terrorizing Los Angeles. I can handle myself. Most of every third girl in Hollywood. Maxine, I'm the private detective. I defied you. My employer is a very powerful man. Fast. Ain't finished with you. It's gonna keep knocking at your door. Tragically, another victim of the Night Stalker. I knew three people who were murdered in three days. I'd be pretty scared. What are you hiding, Maxine? If I tell you something, we've got confidentiality. What'd you do? This is the defining role of your career. What is going on in your life that's interfering with this picture? Squash it. I intend to. Maxine. 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 You're a fucking movie star. Okay. You take my love, love, love. Okay. That's interesting to me. I'll probably yell it. Pass. I mean, um, well, Ruth is excited. <laughs> I like I said, if uh, your your biggest pitches for me to for this third try were X and Pearl, and I I, I did. And well, we I, only I have could, one. We only we only need one degree of Kevin Bacon this time. Yeah, I barely could get through those movies. I bar- I had to fight not to get up from those movies. Um, at least Laura Branigan, the late great Laura Branigan, just made a couple more dollars. Uh, Self control. That was one of her biggest hits besides Gloria. Man, she died way too young. I think she was like 48 when she passed away. Her brain out. But yeah, that was that song. Uh, um, that's the only reason why I didn't get up from the chat because I like that song. Um, 
I was underwhelmed by those first two movies. Uh, this trailer does nothing for me. Nothing. And somebody who grew up in the era they're depicting, Night Stalker, I was living in Southern California. We were all afraid of the Night Stalker. We were all, because he just didn't kill locally. That motherfucker drove miles and miles and miles to get victims. He was in San Bernardino County. He was in Riverside County. He was spotted all over the place. So in the nineteen in the mid nineteen eighties, I remember when they caught that fool. By the way, I think he was in East LA. Don't steal a car from East LA. You're getting your ass beat. I don't care if you're Jack the Ripper, the Night Stalker. I don't care who you are. You try to boost somebody's car in the particular neighborhood that he tried. They ganged up on him. They beat the hell out of him. The cops had to rescue Richard Fritz, the big bad serial killer who had, had killed five people, but you know, and possibly more. All he. he <laughs> If he'd have just stuck the helpless victim, he'd have been okay. You steal a car in LA in the wrong neighborhood, you got what he got. I remember seeing he was all bandaged up and shit, and there was a lead pipe on the ground with some old lady or guy just beat the hell out of him. And like I said, if the cop, if LAPD hadn't showed up to rescue him, Richard Ramirez would have died a lot sooner than he did. So I remember the era that they're depicting, but like I said, um, that trailer didn't do anything for me, and like the the biggest advertisement for Maxine was X and Pearl. And all due respect to anybody who's gonna like it, tie with all the people who worked on it. I'm not saying you're trash or anything. You just, your movie just didn't do anything. For me. Sorry. I know there's a lot of people here but that love that movie. And I tried. I gave it a try. And what was the other one? What was the other one? Everybody told me I needed to see. With the monster at the end, it was just bad. It was by you know the more I learned about the monster, it was it was a forgettable movie. That's why I can't. Um, that's why I can't remember it. What do, what do, um, what do you, Clay? What do you mean? I just saved my own life. Like what? what you, I mean, is, is that about the trailer? Um, I can respect Ty West. Anybody who makes a movie, I respect you. I just I just the movie's not for me, guys. It's just not for me. I just don't get. I'm a horror movie fan. This movie just doesn't do it for me and like i said if, if x and pearl would have been good at least in my opinion i maybe i would be ready to jump in uh for um for the third ride i'm just i'm just not and they just weren't for me uh let's see yeah i i just you know oh Rhea. Oh, aaron's also looking forward to it oh wait are you <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you have to clarify this. I saved my own life. What for saying that I, I, I'm gonna see Maxine? So I'm gonna, uh, but yeah, Rhea's got one here. The oh my god, after I watched this, like, yeah, no, yeah, I, I got um, uh, yeah. wow, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not good, but okay. Well, I mean, no, I, I get I, I get what both of you were saying is, yeah, Showgirls is a terrible movie, but uh. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I could see some of the uh, influence. Maybe you could say in terms of like uh, the uh, character art, uh, you know, what, what, what she's chasing after, and the uh, and a lot of the uh, visual cues and things like that. Yeah, I did like the Laura. I, I love Laura, Brown. dude. I, when I was a kid and watching Solid Gold with her on it, and um, this was the first song I heard. But her one of her biggest hits were, was just Gloria, Gloria, Gloria. I think, I think I knew that song by heart. Love that song. And I was a kid. She, like I said, she died way too young, way too young, man. It's it was tragic. Um, what did you think of the Gotham TV show? Uh, I thought the Gotham TV show was garbage. I thought the Gotham TV show was, I for the same reasons that that um, Smallville nauseates me in a different way. Gotham does. I think Gotham was dead on arrival from its premise. And I am surprised. I am absolutely stunned and shocked that a network like Fox that cancels everything gave that as much time as it did. But there you go. Um, and for our recent TV, sh TV, TV shows, now most of them most of them have been on the C -Network W network. And like I said, bless their hearts, they did what they could with what they had. But I don't believe in low-budget superhero stuff. You know, I have a guilty pleasure when it comes to Titans. I know Titans was 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 a mess, but it's a guilty pleasure. And they did spend a lot more money on Titans than they did on a lot of the CW stuff. Um, Doom Patrol, I love Doom Patrol. All, all the seasons of Doom Patrol were good, and that came from Titans. If it wasn't for Titans, I wouldn't have Doom Patrol. So uh, Sandman, I think, is great. Dead Boy Detectives is going to be fucking phenomenal. 
But for the most part, um, comic book TV has let me down over the last 15 to 20 years, uh, with some, with very few exceptions. But Gotham, I could not stand. Uh, and I tried. Um, it's just like, in one, actually, in, in the longer Gotham lasted, I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? I started feeling that, 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 you know, you know, Bruce is still coming into his own, but everybody that, that, you know, that will, you know, will be there is there now. And it's like, yeah, get out of here with that shit. That's my opinion, though. But like I said, I know that's an unpopular opinion. That's fine. But eh. let's see. Barbarian, oh. barbarian, barbarian. That was it. Listen, in this movie, was it, that movie for the first three quarters of that movie, I was like, okay, okay, all right. That last act sucked. That last act ruined that movie for me. And I... Ugh. All right. Hopefully clarified. Brad, yes, if you didn't play the trailer, you beginning of isn't... Oh, come on, Ruth. Ruth, probably gonna you know, get she... that. You're probably going to get that anyway. Nah, Ruth, your Ruth would spare me. She's going to have good... that smile. She's going to have that smile that she's always going to have while she's doing you in. It's going to be hilarious. Uh, RJ has this one here. Uh, keep... Uh, well, I'm pulling up now. I'm curious to see how we want to feel about the summer Superman moniker and the big yeah, because guns video today at CinemaCon with the uh, the the emblem reveal. I don't even really call it the emblem reveal because he basically already did that, you know, with the. Yeah. But that was a too. nicer, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, he, the term get that know, emblem I, out there, get that emblem out there so people can get used to it, you know. But uh, um, um, how do you feel about the summer ahead. Superman moniker and the big marketing push they're planning? Well, I mean, you, I mean, you got to market on anything you know, that, that you're spending this kind of money on. Yeah, and like I said, there I suspect, not quality notwithstanding, that they're going to lose money on this movie. Doesn't matter. You have planted your flag in the sand. Go all, all in. Go all in, or go home. In the money you need to do on this advertising campaign. I better see this shit everywhere. You need to start ingraining this Superman into people's head and start building a rapport with them long before a trailer comes out. I better see fucking cups and scarves and underwear. Anything you can slap that damn logo on, do it. Whether I like the logo or not, whether I agree with the logo or not, whether I agree with the premise of the tone of the movie, if you want this to work, now is the time to start. Now is the time to start. So, because um, like I said, I just, I got a feeling, just based on everything I have now, things could change. If I get, if like I said, if I continue down this JLI road, I'm probably going to sit this one out. I am not going to be the dick though that says, "Oh, this is not my." No, I am not a JLI themed guy, and there's a lot of JL. I can smell the JLI on this, and I I, I have a history with JLI. So right there, we're gonna have a problem. But I'm only I'm going to judge this movie on whether it sets the right foundations and gets us going to all the other stuff I want to see. Because JLI and, and, and Batman Baby and Bold, those are gonna be the two that I'm just not I'm not gonna base my my you know my premise, you know, whether I'm gonna go forward with it. First of all, my premise, you know, I'm gonna base my engagement whether it looks like we're going to we actually have a company to give us all these movies uh before I jump in. But well, like, you know. Yeah. Green Lantern and everything else, you know. Yeah, one of course. On that note, do you want me to go ahead and pull up the uh, article we were talking about? Yeah, we can go ahead and pull it up. We're not going to go too much into it because, believe it or not, and I'm not, I'm a fucking idiot. I will freely admit this. But you're gonna, you're gonna hear a lot of this argument that, that I've already brought up myself, just with my eight brain cells, because to me it's common sense, and and it's why I am just, like I said, why my primary. My primary um, means of access to the DCU, unless we're promoting it, and even if we're promoting it, if I don't like one of the movies, I'm just going to send. Some, I'm going to send Felipe. If you're watching Felipe, you're going to get all the your praise on this one. This thing I invented is going to be my primary action. You push the button, and it opens up a portal on a screen. And if the, what's on the screen sucks, you have this other button. You push it, and it goes away. I've invented that. You guys heard it first on this show. Don't be trying to don't be trying to copy my invention. But um, go ahead and bring up the article because one this article that Brad's about to bring up is a primary reason why I just can't do it anymore, guys. I just don't have the energy to to be taken for a ride again. 
Yeah, so uh, two years after Warner me emerged with Discovery, debt and mega deal questions loom, chat about a possible M&A, that means merger and acquisition, <laughs> that the David Zazzle, the company could engage in is likely to surge out the two-year reverse Morris trust uh, lockup period for big deals with WBD has ended. Uh, okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so Warner Bros. Discovery was officially created with Discovery. And ATT is uh, Warner Media closed off their mega merger on April 8th, 2022. Two years later, the company giant led by CEO David Zaslov has integrated the two companies' business and increased uh, its cost savings target from $3 billion to more than $5 billion. But its stock has been under pressure as of late amid industry wide challenges, including advertising yeah. costs. Right? No shit, huh? <laughs> as well as a lack of financial guidance during its fourth quarter earnings conference call. Uh, and chatter about a possible again, mer you know, I'll, I'll just say merger and acquisition when we get that uh, little acronym there that the company could engage in is likely to search out the two year reverse Morris trust lock up period for the deals of WBD has ended. As of noon, ET on Monday, WBD shares were down to around 25% for the year to date from above $11 to about eight eight fifty. And again, at their peak, you know, March 2021, they were at 77 I mean, they, they just nuked how much their stock was worth these last few years. And, well, and a lot, to be fair, to be fair, 70% of that was done by the previous regime, but he hasn't done a lot to, to endear buyers. I mean, he's had two years now. So. Yeah. Um, uh, and several analysts have said the company's fourth quarter earnings update lowered their stock prices target on WBD. We maintain our neutral rating for Warner Bros. Discovery and price target of 11. Uh, uh, I'll just get more because that's, you know, uh, yeah, so I'm going to kind of get to the meat of a lot of what we're talking about here. No surprise that the experts conclude they are potentially safe waters ahead on the other side of this time of turbulent transition. The question is can management successfully navigate the many twists and turns needed to get there? The Moffat and Nathan Duo also highlighted the significance of April 8th for the broader media and entertainment merger and acquisition playing field, given the recurring mentions of WBD as a possible takeover target for Comcast slash NBC Universal or buyer of Paramount Global, among other scenarios. The company's two-year anniversary present is the removal of reverse Morris Trust tax handcuffs, freeing the company to explore significant reorganization and or merger acquisition. Nayalis noted, even with the progress on DTC and studio profitability management, may still be forced to explore divesting assets in order to accelerate its debt reduction, unlock value, and they warned it, or it may become the subject of an activist campaign looking to break up the company. Still, $40 billion plus of debt is a significant impediment for most outsiders. All right, stop there. Uh, stop there. Stop yeah. there for anybody. Before anybody watching this on the rewrite, rewrite or rewatch or are listening right now live. No, that does not mean they are going to sell off DC. No, they are not selling off DC to any of these bonehead companies that you'll hear people bringing up. They should sell to Disney. No, they're not selling to Disney. And if they break up, if they once you once you detach DC from the Warner Brothers brand, you 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 sink any value that the company has. So what do you have left? Uh, these IPs are extremely important. So when they start, when they say breaking up, they're 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 gonna they're gonna start you know selling off things that they have you know that are not you know they might they might uh, anything that they might do with DC in my opinion would be limited licensing agreements, things like that, like you see with Sandman, like you see with some of the other things or 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 acquisitions you know or or anything like I said even even up to and including selling IPs. That brainchilds on the internet with their with internet qualifications say would never happen, and I'll just leave that there. But mm -hmm. um, when they say break up the company, there's a lot of breaking off you can do from Warner Brothers before you ever get to the DCIP. I don't think you'll ever see that stuff. But go ahead, Brad. Oh, by the way, before I go any further, Aaron has a good comment here. LOL, we were talking about this merger we're buying for the past few months now. Crashly, it's Hollywood Report yeah. watching the site. Answer to anyone yeah. of the folks of the Hollywood Report that's watching this, please subscribe and hit the like button. <laughs> Like, right. donate to our charity and say hi. Yes, say hi. Yes, yes, please do. Yeah. We 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 have we have a we have a watch party slash roast of uh, Justice League coming up this Saturday. So please join us for that too. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to admit that you you got this information from an absolute fucking moron like myself. But uh, we've been we've been saying this for more than we've been saying this for quite a. I've been saying this for about eight or nine months now because it's and I don't think it's gonna I don't think they're going to acquire Paramount because Paramount is actually more valuable than 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 um than uh warner brothers can afford right now i i the comcast thing is still i can't believe that they would do it with that debt but 
I think that they would pare down the company. I would think they would take the prime assets and then they would sell off everything else, or they would have Warner Brothers do it to make you know so that be prior to the sell, so they could do it that way. But uh, Comcast does have the money to do it. I'm just like, why would you take on that debt? I always thought it would be one of the big three tech companies yeah. that could diversify those assets. Because well, I mean, here's the thing, I mean, though. I mean, I mean, their names might enter the conversation. You know, as this uh, becomes, you know, more the more and more the talk of this becomes more and more, uh, you know, a reality. Because Warner Brothers, then you would have two distribution companies under the same umbrella. Because uh, Universal is their own, and then Warner Brothers would be their own. So they'd have a lot of power there. But go ahead and continue. I guess I'm going to read uh, more of this. Last week, CFRA research analyst Keith Leon cut his WB stock price target by $1, $9, and stuck his to his hold rating, setting a narrow risk premium. He also pointed out such near-term pressures as adjusted earnings before interest taxes, uh, depreciation, and amortization. I expect to be negative in the first half of 2024 before positive in the back half. Now, that's a lot of – William could probably break a lot of that down better than I can. Well, that, that's that's wishful thinking. It's basically saying they're giving them more time for all the things that they're doing to work uh, and that don't expect anything in the first half. But the second half, it may. It may. But I have a I have a big problem, I and mean, keep going. You're probably going to run right into it. Then I'll then I'll. Yeah. Well, uh, the share price uh, the, he, uh, the share price reflects less patience for WB to achieve the transformation of its linear networks to Max. The expert argued, the conglomerate's direct consumer unit, which includes Max and HBO, eat out a slight profit for 2023. But he argued that investors will need more patience for clear financial upside. We think accelerated growth of profits for Max video streaming may take longer. East million due to the actor writer strikes WBD faces lighter programming content 2024. Leon also highlighted, but noted WBD is committed to doing a better job with blue chip movie franchises like Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and Superman. Meanwhile, Bank of America analyst uh, Jessica Reith Ehrlich reduced her price objective for WBD by $3.14 in late February in a report titled Resetting the Bar. And she emphasized that WBD's fourth quarter. 2023 performance reflected the challenging environment as the business continues to be impacted by secular headwinds in the linear businesses. They challenge it into the advertising market by the various strikes. However, the Wall Street veteran maintained her buy rating on the stock. Uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, a lot of this is a lot of like just a lot of it's minutia. Long story short, yeah, yeah, they, exactly. Yeah, they in 2024 have not made the proper it's, investments. Yeah. Yeah, where they need to make them to get the volume of return that they need in order to counter this debt. Yeah. It may yeah, not it's be. It's basically, it's basically the stockholders saying we're not making enough money. Well, and here's the thing: not only that, they're not making enough investment into things that can make the money at the rate of return that they need to to fight the debt that they incurred to to make the company a more attractive and profitable. They bought up some things. They bought up Game of Thrones, they bought up Superman, and they bring up Harry Potter. Okay, one of those things is already working. And it's showing you what needs to what works. Game of Thrones is the model that HBO Max should be using to not only um, build the volume of subscribers, but build the prestige. Because even if you don't necessarily get all the subscribers at once, if people see you investing in things like House of the Dragon, one of the hottest shows on there, and a Game of Thrones franchise that was one of the most historically successful things ever done. And if you look at HBO's blueprint on H or HBO and HBO Max, if you put premium stuff like that and you invest into it, people will invest into you. That's just the way it goes. You can't. What they're trying to do right now is they're trying to do a a pick and save approach, but they want Walmart results. You can't do you can't spend and invest yard sale levels and and then and, and, and you know and then turn around and wonder why you're not pulling in the big blue box numbers to me it you just you just haven't done anything you, you know investors generally respond to taking risk on things like that than they do to you just not doing anything and if all they see you doing is cutting 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 and taking away, taking away, taking away, then they're gonna feel like, well, what am I? Why? Why should I continue to own stock? My eight dollars and fifty cent stock is not going anywhere as long as you keep taking more shit off the table and not adding volume to make profit. Because ultimately, the goal is to make things profitable, right? But you have to have the engines, you have to invest in the motors that are going to make you um, uh, uh, profitability. And I, I, the theatrical model with the amount of 
debt that WB has and the amount of uphill struggle, there is no set of movies in the next two years that is going to even come close to making that better for you. The way you're going to do it is, is in the modern times. Like I said, when, when House of the Dragon comes back, I guarantee you, when the viewership numbers come out, out after that, stock's going to go up a little bit more. Because guess what? Dune had massive numbers, right? And it didn't move the stock at all. You know, because an investor like me, an investor going to know, okay, you, you put out Dune, four or five Dune's, movies. All right, great. And Dune's close to seven. And Dune's close to seven hundred right now. I mean, Dune, Dune yeah. two is doing very, very well. But that's not enough for me. If I'm an if I'm an investor, great. I'm congratulations. You had Barbie and you had Dune. Great. We got almost none of that. We got we got you know we cut that money in half once we paid everybody. Once our production costs. Once our bonus, once we pay back Legendary, who fitted the bill for that and their interest, guess what we got? That is not enough. I need you to invest into the things that are going to get me that one to two billion a month. And they're not doing that. And that's what, if you look, if you read that article, that's basically what, what it comes down to. They're relying on things that are not going to get them the volume and are not going to add to the prestige of what people already own. So, Good luck, Warner Brothers Discovery. Maybe next time. And well, and a uh, 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 fourth also mentioned that this fourth also mentioned, and this kind of plays in what you're saying there about the you know not the, the volume not being a you know what they need in terms of their IP to profitability ratio. You know, the, the the Jon Snow series of uh, you know Tiny Game of Thrones apparently was a uh, canceled. So that's kind of an example. <laughs> this is this, <laughs> this is what I mean by incompetence. No, I knew about this earlier today. This is what I mean about incompetence. I could get a group of fucking squirrels in a box that could come out with a marketable story for Jon Snow. You you can't keep coming up with these wrong answers. That's the wrong fucking answer. I could find you some homeless people. I give them a pencil and a picture of Jon Snow and a dragon, and I they could come up with something that I can market. I'm sorry. And for those reasons, you need to move on. You can't come up with a way to market one of the most popular characters in pop culture on cable in the last 12 to 15 years. I don't need you around. I don't need you around. And you wasted a lot of time to come up with that bad answer. And you need you. They need that. And they also need to not have another bad decision making. And when House of the Dragon is done, and we got to go through another two 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 years without the dragon, that's a problem. HBO lost. I keep repeating this. HBO lost fifty two percent of its male demographic when the last episode of, of the original Game of Thrones ended, and they are just now getting some of that back with House of the Dragon. But House of the Dragons is not enough. You had all this time. When, when House of the Dragon Season 2 goes off the air, you needed to be ready with something else with Game of Thrones. And something else after that. And you need... You, but here's the thing. You invest a lot in the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is the blueprint. Hundreds of millions go into Game of Thrones. So you can't, you can't be inconsistent and say, well, you know, Game of Thrones is a, is a cornerstone of what we're doing. But not follow that blueprint for the other things that you're going to need. You need five, six, or seven Game of Thrones type of situations. You need to become a must uh, must see streamer, and they, they don't do it. And like I said, they just continue to to, to think that they can't. They we we, we, we and, and they listen to the, the rest of the dinosaurs, or we couldn't shouldn't be spending this much money on streaming. Get the fuck out of here. What do you expect to come out of it when you don't put into it? You know, fanboys can say stupid shit. People who are in control of hundreds of millions of dollars and companies cannot go along with that stupid shit. And that's stupid shit. And that's why you have what they have now. Everything in that article, if you want to break it down into English, is there's not enough investment being made into the things that actually make Warner Brothers work. It's long and short of it. So, all right, you can go ahead and take that off the screen and we'll just hit the chat for the rest of the time. All right. Right. Come on, come on. There we go. What's that? Sounds like you're scratching the DJ thing in the background. 
Um, All right, it might, it might be the feedback. My chair. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. The, uh, we got one from Rhea up here, I think. Well, we got a couple from Rhea. Uh, let's, well, I'll start with kind of maybe like oh, the Lord. one, uh, the other one. Uh, William, speaking of which, thoughts on 99 cents that are going out of business? There goes a relic of my childhood. At least we have big lots for now. Um, on the one end, they were, they were, so I heard they were poorly ran, but I don't know all the details of it. But listen, once again, it goes back to the financial dynamics of, of, a, of a lot of America right now. Without those stores, a lot of people are going to starve. I, and I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that. Uh, without, without those stores, I know you still have some of them around, but without stores like that, some of those 99 cent stores are the only things in those neighborhoods affordable for people to eat. Because even if you go to Walmart right now, Walmart ain't cheap, man. That's why the old man shops at the BX in the commissary. He was fused. He'll spend the, I don't know why, he'll spend the extra gas sometimes to go to the commissary, but it's by principle for him. It's, 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 it's not cheap, especially if you've got families. Or you got families and you got elderly people living with you. Some of those canned goods, those ninety nine cents, you know, you know, some of that that that, that keeps people alive. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that's right. And I'm not saying that's where we should be as America, but it's the fact. And with all those stores closing, that's just another outlet. And some of those people can't get around. You know, they can't get around to some of the, um, to uh, to some of the, um, you know, some of these places that are. Hold on for a second. Let me see, let me see some. Okay, that is that is you, but I, I'll, I'll unmute you when I'm, I'm done. But um, it it sucks, man. On the one end, I, I wish people didn't they weren't you know in the position to where they would have to rely on a place like that. But the the, the fact of the matter is, it's tough right now. And just like I said before, with people not being able to afford luxuries like going to the movies all the time, some people can't even afford the luxury of certain levels of food. So yeah, when I hear about that, I'm like, yeah, I know there were some issues at 99 cent stores. I know they didn't do, you know, some of their employees, and it just wasn't a great place to work. I would have rather them, you know, I would rather the, the management structure change than these stores eliminate, be eliminated by people. But then on the flip side, I wish people were, were all making enough money to where we didn't need stores like this. But the reality of it is that we do. So yeah, that sucks. I, and, and you know, but the first thing I thought about is like, where are these people going to go? You know, you know. Um, you could for 10 15 dollars you could get a good meal for you know your family if you're on the fringes and you're just barely making it you're coming out of covid you're underemployed you're working two jobs you've got you know student loans you're playing all this stuff 15 20 dollars getting be able to get you the wife and the two kids something decent to eat you know not great we're not talking about gourmet but you know what you're not starving and you get some kind of balanced meal, and a lot of these ninety-nine cent stores helped in that, and and it sucks, man. It just you know, it just is. I'm glad, I'm fortunate enough to not be in that position, but at the same time, a lot of us are inches away from being there, and now those people don't have a place to go. So uh, I'm not too happy about that. I, I hope other other uh, places take up the uh, slack. I hope other franchises come in and provide that same type of value and discount to people. And I also hope that the world gets better to where. You know, it, you know, it, it, twenty dollars is not the difference between you uh, and your kids being able to eat or not. It's my opinion on it. Now, Rhea has, <clears throat> I think, this one's a little more related to the article. The conjecture and editorial on these sites is being taken as fact. They use the abbreviated quotes out of context and they take the program salt just to keep the conversation going. Yeah, but uh, when it comes to this. This is something that I, when it comes to Warner Brothers and uh, uh, if we're talking about the investment, it's just, just something that we've been talking about. Man, me, you, Ray, we've been talking about this for quite a while. Yeah. And they're using a lot of minutia and a lot of uh, code words there, but it all comes down to the fact that where is that boost going to come from Warner Brothers? And they're, they're reliant on things that are just not the kind of volume that you need when you're 29 billion or whatever in debt and you're trying to make yourself as attractive for an influx, you know, it's, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Who knows? Uh, let's see. What's the, uh, Aaron says WBD is using game of Thrones as the blueprint for what they want to do with the Harry Potter TV show as they should, as they should. Technically, they should not not with dragons and everything else, but the actual story structure and the con the compulsion and how it, those things. And same thing with Sopranos. Every they, they need to sit down and, and look inward of all the things that have that have that people have endured themselves to, 
You know, Tony Soprano is a household name in a lot of houses. You know, Cersei Lannister is a household name. Tyron, I mean, all these guys, you know, and all the stuff that they've done in the last 30 years. Odds, Omar, who doesn't know Omar? I got to get mine. Everybody knows Omar, you know, because of the wire. I mean, that's what they need to do. They need to invest in that brand like they used to do. They, you know, and, and they need to have some type of story structure. Doesn't have to be an exact copy. Of it. You should have plenty of Game of Thrones out there. Don't get me wrong. But the structure, how Game of Thrones makes people feel, how Sopranos makes people feel. They need to invest a lot of money in the things like that. And I just don't see them have, willing to do it right now. They want to, they want to, you know, they want to use the dinosaur logic and, and, and throw all their money into the, 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 the theater. And like I said, I don't want them to stop spending that money there. But at the same time, that can't be the focus anymore. It can't. It's the math, math continues to beat the hell out of everybody who steps into the ring with it. And I don't see math losing to this situation, you know? So, yeah. all right. Uh, Rebel Moon event on Thursday? Um, For me, it's next Wednesday. Wednesday the 17th. Yeah, because I think, uh, you know, the, the LA premiere is that like film junkies going to that, you know, a few other people. He's gone on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the one that William's going to is on. Uh, yeah, I gotta wait until you know hits Netflix like everybody else, unfortunately. Uh, but what are we gonna do? Watch? We're gonna do watch party for that Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be that. That weekend's gonna be big for our um, for our fundraiser. All righty. Sounds like fun. <laughs> and I just, it made me realize, yeah, the Justice League is gonna be our last watch party before that. <laughs> so there you go. Is yeah, Ray says I appreciate you talking about ninety the ninety cent store. Yeah, man, it's it's just it's just tough. It's tough, and I think that because a lot of these situations that we talk about, they may not be pop culture, but they lead directly to it. Because if you can't afford the streaming service, the conversation ends. If you can't afford the movie ticket, the conversation ends. So we can't. We have to be able to bring these these situations into the fold because they directly affect whether a consumer can actually purchase these things that we're talking for, talking about. And if they can't make that purchase, then whether these things ever happen again, it, it gets cast in the doubt. So, <clears throat> by the way, rush out and watch the newest episode of X Money. Seven words get spoiled. My All right, episode. get that off my screen. Get up. Get up. Get okay. that. <laughs> okay. no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, bring it up. Go ahead, and bring it up. I don't yeah. care. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, episode on the uh, anime day is on the level of the anime Game of Thrones and scene storytelling. These guys got to work on the movies, yeah. I've been pretty happy with X Men 97 myself. I haven't seen the new episode yet, but uh, if they're qualified to work on movies, I'm fine with it. But if my, I, I can't say somebody's qualified to work on a movie necessarily based on a cartoon because there's a lot of things that you, there's a lot of range that you have to go to in a movie, there's different buttons you need to press on, on you know on the live action crowd that you don't necessarily always have to press on the thing, you know, that's not saying that they can't do it, but I, I mean, I, yeah. Uh, Slipknot says, speaking of household names, one guy had this crazy point of view, the Thor Iron Man and Captain America weren't household names before the MCU Marvel movies made them so popular. Marvel had the advantage. They, they were household names enough because they were, people, you know, people, people Captain, heard of they them. already had movies. Yeah, people knew who they were. were yeah, they were had they movies. Spider they didn't Man have good level? movies, but they had them. Yeah, but were they at Spider-Man level? No. But here's the thing: Marvel didn't make that choice. That wasn't that wasn't up to them. People people make it to where they sound like, well, you you don't always have to use a big brand name because Marvel did this and they were successful. Marvel had no fucking choice, guys. They didn't own anything else. They 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 didn't own any of their own. they they used the only IPs that they had. They didn't own the, the X Men at the time. They didn't own Spider Man. They still don't own Spider Man at the time. They didn't own Fantastic Four at the time. They didn't have. There was no. There was, it wasn't like they were sitting in a room, you know, with some Zen philosophy as saying, "Oh, well, it doesn't matter whether the characters are big name or not. We we can just make the story, and everybody's gonna give a fuck." They didn't have a choice. Granted, it worked out well, and Kevin Feige had the experience having come up with those other IPs, but they didn't have a choice. You literally go down the food chain, and they, they stopped at the one that they owned the IPs for, and that was Avengers. Because if they didn't have Fantastic Four or X-Men, they were probably gone with them first. But yeah, it wasn't some, you know, like I said, I'm not knocking Kevin Feige. You guys know I respect the guy. A lot, even, even at times where a lot of people don't, I don't get that shit. But, um, when you know 
it wasn't it was it was academic is what the word i'm looking for it was ac academic you didn't own spider-man so you, you weren't starting there you didn't own the x-men you weren't starting there you started with the only ips you had left that you had ownership of and they were you know the, at the time were the least attractive ones because everybody wanted the x-men and spider-man because those were you know x-men was for obvious reasons so yeah i it, you know even if even if you want to make the argument that they weren't household names if you've already committed to starting your universe and you don't have those other characters, who else are they going to use? Where were, where were the decisions? You know what I mean? So where, where were your options? So yeah, Mar MCU has done a really good job of cultivating and making them household names, but they did not have the choice of where they started. There was not, there was no other way for them to go. They started with what they had and they made it work. So next one. Uh, let's see. Oh, second kind of says, uh, Thank you, Wesley Snipes. Neil, I sent a warm for bringing us Blade and helping get X Men started on Fox. So, before saying that's related to that, I don't, I don't agree with this. I mean, no one X, X Blade had nothing to do with, with the propulsion of any comic book, anything. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody. <laughs> I have people that buy comics from me during that era that didn't know who Blade was. The general public knew who Wesley Snipes was, but that didn't lead to anything else. Blade Blade didn't lead to, to that. They had been trying to make X-Men stuff long before Blade was even green lit or conceived. You know, it's, it's one, one was a much harder movie to make, by the way, which in the X-Men franchise, but... People keep telling me, no, 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 no offense, but people keep telling me how important Blade was. It was important for them as far as that individual box office result and that family of movies and Wesley Snipes, but that wasn't the catalyst for anything. I, you know, I, 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 I was there. I mean, I was like, I, when they, when they said they were going to make a movie about Blade, I'm like, okay. But then when I saw who was going to be playing Blade, I'm like, okay, that's why that's every, that's the only thing the general public is going to care about because Wesley Snipes, that was, Wes, that was prime Wesley Snipes. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't agree with that. That that Blade the movie, um, the last two sucked anyway. But I don't believe that that Blade had um, anything to do with the propulsion of anything like that. Because like I said, X Men, Spider Man were always the the top tier ones that people were always going to try to get movies made of as soon as they could make them. Yeah, well, on that note, and Blade he was awesome. <laughs> but on that note, uh, Ray uh, has uh, one kind of related. William Brad, what do you think made Spider Man so captivating for the last fifty years as the four generations? He's an everyman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, he's that's an everyman. That's the whole idea and, behind him. And even though he's a white guy, Stan Lee's priority wasn't making him a white guy. That's just what you did in the sixties. You know, when when you were when you were you know, you, obviously we weren't we weren't there, uh, so everybody was a white guy or or passable white guy. That didn't matter to Stan Lee though. There's a reason why Spider-Man is covered from head to toe because when he's in that costume, everybody who picks up a comic can be him. They can they can see themselves in that costume. He's an everyman, and even more so uh, with Miles Morales because Miles Morales is not only an every kid, but he he he's going through the same things that Peter Parker was originally going through in the modern world, and a lot more people added on to that and can, can relate to that, especially if you're a minority. And you haven't had any kind of a reputation, and you haven't had anybody telling the story of what you were going through as a 13, 14, 15, 16 year old kid in a mainline comic. So, for those two reasons, I think that's why. Yeah. Do you well, and kind of related to that the idea that anybody from any background can, uh, you know, kind of because, because Spider Man, you know, his costume completely covers his identity, and anybody can, can project themselves onto him. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of this, uh, Todd McFarlane, uh, you know, he, he shared this story. You can actually find this on the on the uh, interview he does on the Spawn uh, DVD. He talks about when he was uh, working on Spider-Man, he, uh, he'd always want, he, I, I guess he never got to do this, but he'd want to do the story where uh, Spider-Man, uh, there, there was a guy, he says, like, a guy from Harlem uh, mugs a guy from Wall Street or something, and Spider-Man comes in and, you know, webs the mugger up. And uh, the Wall Street guy, you know, drops some kind of uh, derogatory comment, <clears throat> and the Spider-Man pins the guy to the wall, and he points to his face and he says, "Hey, what color do you think I am under this mask?" And the Wall Street guy goes, <laughs> "Yeah, it's it 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 it, it plays that way." And like I said, everybody else, Superman, everybody, you know, it's you, you can't do that with any other character you, you, at that era, and I, and I think that's that's why, um. 
that's 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 why it works. That's why it continues to work. Um, better writing would help too. But uh, once again, more shit like this. More shit like this. That's not a cheap show. Last Last of Us is an immensely expensive show, but that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. And like I said, you know, you you do the math. Like I said, there's so many other ways that you make money. They got to get rid of the theatrical box office mentality when it comes to making investments into these things. These things put put these franchises right into your home. They bypass everybody. When you, when you when you put something quality on streaming, you do what you want on streaming. You you put that straight into the consumer's wheelhouse. So to me, that should be a priority. It's things like Last of Us. I mean. Game of Thrones, pinoffs, Harry Potter, all that. All that should be, like I said, and then as an investor, I'm going to be like, you know what? They're rolling right now. I'm going to buy some more shares. And whereas you may not make an instant profit, even though I think you would in your in your monthly subscriptions, me buying more of your shares increases the value of your company and increases your leverage of your financing. It just, it's all connected, man. Hi, Vince. Hello, Vince. Yeah. Well, I'm way behind in the chat. Yeah, don't bring up one of more X Men ninety seven shit up in here, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, they are in development of raking our re- re- Ready Player One. Yeah. yeah, I've heard about that. I enjoyed the, the first one, by the way. Yeah, I did too. I did too. Uh, William's going to spin this anti blade narrative into the ground. It's not an anti blade, but people, people, every, I hear people say, "Well, well, blade opened up the door." No, it didn't. It opened up the door for Wesley Snipe to make more money. Congratulations! It opened up the door for two more movies. Congratulations! But it didn't open up the door to, to, to anything else beyond that. Nobody knew who it was. You can't energize people about comic book movies if they don't even know it's a comic book character. They knew Spider-Man was. They knew the X-Men were. And those movie success propelled us to where we are right now. That's not an anti-Blade thing. I, didn't, I, listen, I, didn't, I thought the last two were garbage. Um, but, you know, that's that's not, you know, that's not here or there. That, that's an opinion. But as far as, like, you know what broke through the door and actually made comic book movies possible it it happened it, it wasn't played it, it, it was x-men it was spider-man those movies on that level with those type of recognizable ips on them because a lot a lot of people still did you know even you know x-men wasn't necessarily a household name like spider-man was it was more known you, you than, than a lot of people give it credit for Wolverine, people that even if you didn't know the X-Men, you saw Wolverine some because he was on some of the most iconic covers. And back in the 80s and 90s, they used those to sell lunch pills, TV shows, all kinds of stuff, man. So so yeah, it was it was uh it, it, Blade, like I said, decent, decent first movie, last two, mm. but it it wasn't, you know, like I said, it, it, it wasn't the rocket fuel that got us going to where we are now. All right, where are we at here? Uh, I hear ghost pepper salsa. No, thank you. Let's see. No, I don't. I don't think so. Blade Blade was the makeable movie at the time. X Men X Men. You know, X Men was more of a risk, but they were always planning X Men before they planned anything. You know, they they capitalized on Wesley Snipes being able to look and feel like a particular character, but that wasn't X Men was always a priority for that studio. Let's see. And like I said, not knocking Blade's accomplishment, but like I said, you got it. You can't say that a no name character that nobody knew about they knew Wesley Snipes. If you'd have put me in that movie. That nobody's going to see that movie. <laughs> if you put a lesser known, you put a third tier black actor in that movie that's not Wesley Snipes in 1990s, late 1990s Wesley Snipes, nobody's going to see that movie. Let's see, Jessica Biel couldn't even say Blade 3 from Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's harsh. That movie was horrible, by the way. Yeah, it was. Trinity is it's awful. A- you know, uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I, it, a lot of people in retrospect look at it that way. But like I said, I mean, when when they bought these IPs, X Men X Men was always the, the the you know the number one priority to get made. They were going to make that movie with or without a Blade. Blade was the makeable movie first, but that doesn't mean they weren't they were going to make the X Men. They were going to make the X Men. That was years in the making, years before Blade. So. 
And then Spider Man was easy. That that's that just printed money there. Edward James almost. You mean Gaff from Blade Runner? Is that what you mean, Gaff? <laughs> Too bad you won't live. Oh, yes, I think Blade was proof that superheroes can transcend out of comics and become myths in their own right. We don't need to know where Blade came from to make him a compelling figure in pop culture. Yeah, you did for the risk that they were going to take. Yeah, you did. In ni- in ni- now you can say that, but in 1999, fuck no. No, 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 no. The only reason why Blade got made is because Wesley Snipes. That's why Blade got made. Because of Wesley Snipes. Because X-Men, they had already had the IP for, for X-Men. And they were trying to figure out how to make an X-Men movie. Whether Blade or not ever came out, they were going to make that X-Men movie. That was that was that was always going to happen. They were going to capitalize on the the, the, the popularity of X-Men. They were they were Blade being made didn't like I said, X-Men was always going to be made. Blade was made because of Wesley Snipes, and Wesley Snipes campaigned and pushed for that movie. Still campaigning and pushing for like some kind of involvement. But like I said, if you if you don't have Wesley Snipes, that movie doesn't get made. And I don't. And so you can't really, and in my opinion, you can't say that it proves anything when the movie were in question that there was always going to be made no matter what. They didn't need any 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 more proof. They purchased that IP for a reason. They they knew where they were going with it. So Blade w- wasn't proving anything for that. I mean, that might prove p- to something to people on an individual level, but not. I don't. I don't think the corporate people were sitting around, you know, because like I said, you take Wesley Snipes out of that movie, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't open the door for anything, you know. That's just. Me. Uh. Spider-Man comment. Let me see if I can find that fourth. Uh, fourth also says Blade One. I just would say remaster. Yeah, the CGI, a lot of the blood has kind of uh, well, is a little bit wonky it's, today, it's, but you know, it's, 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 it, you know, it's, you, know, you, know you, you let it. Well, I mean, you let it. You know, it was just this is what they the CGI they had for the time. Okay, I'm not see if I can find your comment here. Fourth. Oh, here it is. I'm not saying it's not great, but it's not. I mean, at least the first one. That you, I'm not defending the second dude, uh-huh. but um. But it wasn't what you. It wasn't the catalyst for it for for what you guys are saying. It is, in my opinion, those movies were going to get made. You were not going to own IPs like Spider Man, which Sony did, and X Men, and Fox did, and rely on Blade doing anything. You were making those movies no matter what. So there was no proof needed. That's that's all I'm saying. Um, <clears throat> they knew Spider Man was was white when his costume on. Ain't nobody believe it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm saying. They knew Spider-Man was white. We knew from day one, minute one, that Peter Parker was a white guy. That's not what Stan Lee was telling you, though. Stan, that the guy outside of the costume was what everything in 1961, 62 was. It was all white. We all know that was an unfortunate time for inclusion. We, we don't need to dwell on that. But when you marketed this guy who was covered from head to toe, it was a lot easier to, to relate to everyone else that wasn't that I can be that guy. Because everything he's doing is in that costume. When he's lifting up that car, when he's beating out of that criminal, when he's swinging around through Manhattan, he's in his costume. That could be me. You know what? I remember being Spider-Man as a little kid for Halloween. I think a lot of people were, it didn't matter what background you come from. And and that was because when he put on that costume, he could be us. You know, and, you know, Superman, when Superman is is acting as Superman, that's not the same case. See what I mean? So, um, yeah, that's that's part of his relatability. Let's see. Azteca says 1987 was the downfall for confidence. Then came Blade out of nowhere and got the shower back. We need to be just like Batman against her Batman after the awful Batman or Robin. All right, keep that up there. All right. That there was no genre to get back, dude. There was no fucking there was no genre. It was Batman. For the most part. That was your top tier comic book movie. Even the other ones that you had, there was no genre to speak of. The mask, nobody knew what the fuck that was. They liked Jim Carrey, they went to go see the movie. The crow, to this, like I said, we, we've gone over how you know how no one knew what the crow was. There was no genre. We have a genre now because we know the, where these characters come from. We know where Iron Man, Captain America, Batman, Spider-Man. we know where all these characters come from. So there was no genre to fall down from. You had the Batman, you know, you know, movies in the 90s, and then even even then. 
even when Batman Begins come out, it's four hundred one million dollar movie that wasn't a genre. It wasn't a genre yet. It was a bunch of movies spread out over maybe 10, 15 years. But in Blade's case, it wasn't even that because, you, you, like I said, you can't have a genre if nobody knows that he was even a comic book character. That wasn't the same case when you're talking about Batman or any of these other characters. Now you have a genre. Now you have a collection of movies, uh, go-to movies. But when Blade was made, like I said, most of the people who went go, and like I said, a, a good majority of them were black folks because Wesley Snipes was our darling back then. Uh, most of the people I knew who he was, of course, but most people did not know who he was. So you can't, you, you can't even if you're a company and Blade does great, you're not going to take that information that data and say, well, let's make a bunch of comic book movies based on that because that wasn't the attraction of the character to begin with. So no. Uh, but like I said, Batman, all that that era, and even in, up until including the Nolan movies, there was no genre. It was those movies and the X Men. But at that time, you had already had your risk. So no, like I said, I, I, listen, I'm not knocking Blade, but I'm not giving it credit for anything but making Blade money, making Wesley Snipes money. It didn't kick the door open for anything, in my opinion. All right, next one. Uh, uh well, still so related. Uh, we can't have all these. <laughs> No, you guys are using revisionist history, looking back through the lenses of what we have now and seeing, okay, well, that was first, so that must have been it. No. Were you guys not there when this movie came out? There was no comic book decision-making being made off that movie. The decision to make the X-Men movie had already been made. It had already been made. So how is, you know... So what proof were they looking for if they had already decided that they were going to make an X-Men movie, they were going to do it before that movie was even released? So you're going to tell me they used an IP that no one knew was even a comic book movie to, to base their decision-making going forward? No. But I, I, I guess it's cool to, 20 years later to, to look at that and re repaint history, but it's not true. Let's see... Well, yeah, Cameron Diaz was hot at the time, too. But nobody knew what the mask was at that time. And people and, who and, try to tell you are lying. And Well, and anybody, of course, the mask, the movie, is nothing like the mask. Well, other than he has the yeah. mask and he has superpowers. So it's like the, it's, it, the, the comic yeah. is markedly different from the movie. They were able to do that with the comic or with the show, with the movie, because nobody knew what to go. That, that, that's kind of... I, it's the, the mask is a very violent comic. Oh hell yeah! And it's not, a, and the comedy is not what Jim Carrey was portraying. But you could do that with a character because why? Nobody knew who it was, so because there was no genre. You know, I mean, it's just it is what it is. You know. <sighs> you know what? Passion of Fifty Seven. These these are Blade was one of those movies in that pocket. He was hot. He was hot. Everybody wanted Wesley Snipes from New Jack City on. Everybody wanted Wesley Snipes. Passenger 57. Um, there was a couple other movies he did that were just pure action movies that weren't all that good, but people went to go see them because he was, you know, you get that hot. He was a Steven Seagal that could actually perform. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> See that skills, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, William Howard the Duck started. Okay, all right, all right. I, oh, but <laughs> it, 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 it ended some careers. They need to do a behind the behind the scenes, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, would be hilarious. that movie, you know, Demo, uh, de oh. yeah, demolition man. Demolition, de these are these are the kind of this is why you got Blade, by the way. Oh, yeah, because demolition, once, 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 and demolition yeah. man, so he is fantastic in that. He's hilarious, he's an awesome bad guy in that. Yeah, once Wesley Snipe had that clout, he he could name his project. There was a time there where he could say, this is what I want to do. And they, people were going to go along with it. Let's see. You know what? You, you want to troll me? I'm not I'm not letting you in tomorrow when you come in here. I don't care if you're in Vegas or not. <laughs> I'm not giving you a shirt either. <laughs> Let's see. Not No, okay. Azteca, there's a difference between having comic book films and having a genre. What was the next one you got after that? 
after the Superman films. It wasn't a genre, you know. And like I said, you with Superman, you didn't need a genre because it was Superman. So, but you didn't you didn't have a comic book movie genre. You had those three movies, four movies. Oh, geez, like you basically had two Superman movies because the last two. Yeah, yeah, two. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then you had Batman. Okay, that's not a genre. All right, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, Supergirl. That's not a genre. Well, that, that's some Supergirl movies. Suck. Yeah, that's some movies. <laughs> that's not a genre. What we're in right now is a genre. You know, to to to, to a much higher degree that you could be able to make decisions on, at least. You know, but nobody was making decisions about Batman because of the success of Superman, and that was a top tier character. So there you go. Mystery Man, uh, why did you bring that shit up in here? Oh, Rax, 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 you ruined me. Absolute horrid movie. Cool soundtrack, though. How you doing, casual fan? <laughs> oh, Ford, that's one of my favorite quotes in, uh, in Demolition Man. John Spartan, how do you respond to destroying a $50 million shopping mall for a girl whose ransom was only $100,000? Fuck you, lady! <laughs> <laughs> like I said, that's that's uh that that's top that's that's top tier Wesley Snipes. There was a time where um okay, there were just there, there you go. <laughs> oh, and this is we just reviewed you know my love for the Punisher during this era of time. This movie was heartbreaking. Not a genre movie. Well, you should be shocked if I was a fan of this that movie. That movie is horrible, man. That's hilarious. Fucking horrific. <laughs> movie sucks. I and it did exactly what it should have done. <laughs> we will not disgrace the legacy of the Blue Raja on this channel. Come on. They already did by making that movie, dude. That movie was bad, bad. Let's see. Don't forget Captain Rack. Okay, so you guys are bringing up really bad examples. <laughs> just... Yeah, I think we pulled up that clip a while back where it, it, it's his first meme with the Red Skull. <laughs> and uh, Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you, we did. Uh, I wouldn't bet against it. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, now that people would, know uh, that Blade's a comic book character. Yeah, yeah, always bet on Blade, as, uh, as Forth just said. Um, we don't talk about that around here, Antonio. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you just got to buy the bomb. I mean, it's it's still a stain on the on the on the genre. I will say. Yeah, no, no, it, it it almost ended the comic genre for DC, but everybody else is doing fine. Yeah, yeah we are we are got. Oh man, we are gonna just tear that thing apart on Saturday. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, because those examples are pretty much yeah. Okay, I got it. Um. William, what is your oldest favorite superhero movie, even if it didn't age well? Guilty Pleasure. Oh, um, Superman 2. Superman 2 is one of the great, great sequels of all time. And it does not age well. It does not age well. And Superman does shit well, in that the, movie. Uh, the, that, the, yeah, the just, Saran rap S, he throws it. Yeah, <laughs> that is not, yeah, that is not truth, justice, in American way. Superman beats the hell, uses his superhuman powers to beat the hell out of a normal, mortal, superhero, super, non-superhuman truck driver because of a grudge he had earlier in the movie. Superman, you know, that's the first time I saw Superman well, yeah, but, murder. Well, yeah, but, you know, yeah, but William, that's not, not, not yeah. something compared to when he trashes the guy's truck. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like I said, but I, Superman 2, Terrence Stamp, uh, Neil before Zod, uh, he, and, and, and those Kryptonians, I, I loved, I saw that movie so many, I begged the old man to take me back. We saw yeah. that movie. I saw two movies that Man said, I would tell you, Empire Strikes Back is one. And Superman two suits. So I saw some of the greatest sequels of all time at Man Shiny Theater in L.A. And just seeing that, uh, like I said, Terrence Stamp to this day. I love Michael Shannon's uh, Zod. So I think it's an all time great. But in its own way, like I said, Zod from uh, you know so Superman. And when you look back on it now and watch Superman two, it's like, oh my god. But I was six. I was six, and this was that movie was the world to me. And I look back on it fondly now. Now. Do I want that Superman to ever influence any modern Superman? No. 
that that Superman resonated in my yeah, six year old well, mind well, back good, then. Well, I mean, good luck pushing against you know half of the Superman fandom on that. Yeah, and that's why we keep having failure with you know trying yeah. to get long term Superman success. But there you go. Yeah, Superman two, Superman the movie was boring in my opinion, but you know, Superman two. Uh, oh, so much first appearance is appearing in babysitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vincent D'Onofrio actually, because he's the he's the auto mechanic. They uh, they uh, they go to when, when, to get the uh, when they're when they're getting the car, uh, the tire put back on the car. By the way, I, it's funny you should bring, mention that uh, fun because I was I was literally just thinking about this one part in the movie today because that's 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 a pretty. Uh, I know William's not a comedy guy, but that's actually probably one of my favorite comedies growing up. Uh, Adventures of Babysitting and. Uh, I was actually just thinking about that earlier today. There's this one scene. I'm gonna pull. Up, I'm gonna pull up the clip right now because this is this is, makes me laugh so hard. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull this up right now because uh, you can. Uh, let's let's say there's probably you you know people's dirty little minds will go directions with this. I'll just put it that way. But uh, uh, go ahead and read this. Um, one. Well, the first one was Howard the Duck because I I was a, a collector of Howard the Duck and the um you know the nexus of all realities i was a big swamp thing fan i was a big i mean i was a big fan some of the first comics i ever bought uh and when i saw that movie i was horrified of what they gave me and i was like dude the old man's never going to trust me and taking him to a movie again because i i dragged him to this i was 12 you know uh so that movie was horrible um the other one was um the dark knight rises the dark knight rises probably not on not in the same way as howard the duck is but in, in 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 at the same level, it was it was a huge disappointment. Um, I I didn't think I was going to get a movie as, as good as The Dark Knight because I didn't really think outside of Heath Ledger's appearances, I really didn't resonate to me. But it, the, his energy drives the movie, so I was looking forward to a much more balanced movie in The Dark Knight Rises. It was a bad movie, and it was a bad movie that I knew was a bad movie while I was sitting through it. I didn't need retrospect to to come to the conclusion that The Dark Knight Rises was a bad movie. I sat there and I was like, this is a bad movie. So Howard the Duck and uh, The Dark Knight Rises, not on the same for the same reasons, on the same level, but those are the two biggest disappointments I've ever had in comic book movies that I was looking okay. forward to. So let me, I'm going to pull this up. This part of a sign. I literally just today was just thinking about this. So uh, those are hot dogs, right? Yeah. Want one? Mm, yeah, I'd love one. That'll be two bucks. Check. Yeah, but it's a good check. See, Chris's mom wrote it to Chris because Chris bought her something. I can't remember what. Then I bought Chris some press on nails. I gave Chris the difference, and she wrote the check over to me. So I'll write the check over to you. You keep the difference, and I'll, I'll take the hot dog. So you got a pen? Get out of here. Wait. I'm starving. You'd rather throw it away than give it to me. I work on a cash-only basis. But it's a perfectly good check. No. I'll make it very clear. You slip me the cash, and I'll slip you the wiener. But I don't have any cash. Then I don't have a wiener. <laughs> <laughs> that guy didn't choose his words very well at the end. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, who, who was that? See, I forgot who played in that movie. Uh, no, Elizabeth Shue was in that movie. Wasn't yeah, that, that was. Uh, who was that? Let me pull her up here. Right. Uh, she was one of the. Uh, that wasn't uh, Kelly LeBrock, uh, was it? No, no, that was. Uh, I was about to say Kelly LeBrock is. Uh, I think Lewis. it was Penelope Ann Miller right there, who was. Uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know who the guy who was the uh, other, but yeah, that also had, I guess, canonically the first cinematic appearance of Thor because uh, D'Onofrio is the mechanic who has the Thor helmet, and they or or he has the hammer, and then the uh, the kid who's the big Thor fan with the helmet, she think. Literally, take thinks that he's uh, Thor, so uh, so they, they end up uh, you know getting a bit of a discount because he's like, oh, it's like you're my hero. It's like I want to grant you the uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, the the helmet with the wings on it. That uh, oh, that's why you're not acting like Thor. That's why you're being such a dick to us. Okay, I would have gone forever and never thought I was going to get a babysitter adventures of babysitter reference on this channel. But hey, there you go. You never know hey, what's going to happen here. Hey, I could I could pull that part up right now too. No. Nope. Let's Why not. not? Um, you do you can't watch scary movie, but you can watch these movies, those movies. That movie's hilarious. I love the question you sitting. Okay, no, I no, I am gonna pull up this one other part though, because this this also really makes me laugh. <laughs> it's what do you think Mark Charlie will do? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I think Mahasha Ali is going to actually act, actually act in a role. Wesley Snipes has basically played Wesley Snipes in Blade. That's all. He's just Wesley Snipes. You watch any movie that 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 he's in, he's a stoic Wesley Snipes is what he is. But Mahasha Ali just has the different dimensions of uh different um dimensions. All right, guys, it's been oh, wait, wait. What are you doing? okay. This makes me laugh so hard. This part too. It's when because that uh, you know she's the friend of hers who ran away in the. Uh, she's at the bus station so they have to go downtown to try to get her and let's lease all these you know crazy shenanigans but he's calling her for help and uh here i love this part here this car i can't drive it into the city <laughs> oh my god there's a man with a gun get me the hell out of here brenda look just hang up and sit down don't move i'll be there in half an hour <laughs> oh please hurry i think he's gonna kill somebody maybe me <laughs> I mean, the look. Just keep can't... this up on the screen here. <laughs> All right, um, that's it, guys. That's it. Um, All right. <laughs> um, segue to this. I, I don't know if that works or not, but we are coming up on our ending, our climax of our event. So, hopefully, you guys can donate. Hopefully, you guys can share. And uh, we'll be doing a lot next week with all of this. Uh, I will be getting some of the gals from uh, AFSP on with us um, as soon as they're scheduled lined up. But they will definitely be there for one of these things that we do next week. Um, we most likely will have that the Rebel Moon screening on the Friday, not the Saturday, uh, because of, uh, I have some schedule issues on Saturday. But so, but we, you know, we'll still do it. Um, so the nineteenth. Yeah, the actual release day. So. All right, guys, that's it. I'm going to go eat my sandwich, and I'm going to go to bed because uh, my allergies are making my – I'm surprised my eyes are not swollen shut. I woke up today, and I'm like – I look like Mr. Magoo because of the allergies. So, uh. yeah. All right, guys, um, unless something comes up, um, I will see you tomorrow night, probably around 1130. All right, later, guys. See you.